We shall start off with example 1, which is partial fractions with linear factors only. Okay, so what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to express this fraction, this single fraction, into partial fractions. Alright, so how do we do that? Well, so this is the first time we're going to do this, so I shall do it slowly. Okay, now the first step of doing any partial fraction question will be to factorize the denominator. Okay, so that will be the first step always factorize the denominator. So you know that in this case, we have, the, I mean, just leave the numerator alone. So the denominator can be factorized to become 2x plus, no, 2x minus 1 and x plus 1. Okay, so based on what we have learned earlier on in the introduction, is that, you know, this n product, okay, this single fraction, right, the denominator of this single fraction, all right, is a product of these two uh, linear factors. And therefore, all right, we know that before you make the common denominator of the partial fractions, okay, the partial fraction should have a form like this. a over 2x minus 1 plus b over x plus 1. I mean, we mentioned this earlier on, didn't we? So this is the second step that we will do. So step 1, we factorize the denominator. Step 2, we split up. Okay, based on the product, okay, based on the denominator, we split up into a sum of two simpler fractions. Okay, now, then you may ask, hey, hey, you know, why a? You know, very simple. Now, again, I think we mentioned this earlier on as well, that the, de the numerator must always be at least one degree lower than the denominator. So this denominator is degree one, and therefore the numerator must be of degree zero. Degree zero simply means that x to the power of zero will be the highest power of x, and therefore there's actually no x. Okay, x to the power of zero is one. Okay, so simply to say, if this is a linear, okay, the numerator will be a constant. Alright, so something like this. So, now what? Okay, very simple. So since you know that, hey, you know, this left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, and if you can solve for what is A, the value of A, and the value of B, you basically solve the partial fraction questions, isn't it? So how do we solve for A, and how do we solve for B? Well, answer lies in multiply throughout. Okay, so step three will be to multiply throughout by 2x minus 1 and x plus 1. Okay, so to the left hand side, when you multiply by the denominator, well, it's simply the denominator cancel out, isn't it? So you're simply left with 11x minus 1. Now for the right hand side, okay, now when you multiply the right hand side by you know, okay, let me just write it down. Okay, so we multiply it by 2x minus 1 and 2x plus 1, okay, to each fraction. Okay, so of course, when you multiply to this, the first one, right, the 2x minus 1 and the 2x minus 1 will cancel with the a, isn't it? I mean, we cancel with the denominator 2x minus 1, isn't it? So you'll be only left with a and left with x plus 1. Okay, likewise for b, Okay, the x plus 1 will cancel with the x plus 1, and therefore, you'll only be left with the 2x minus 1. Again, you should be able to do this multiplication throughout process very, very smoothly. Okay, I mean, you have learned how to multiply throughout since um, lower secondary. So this shouldn't be a big problem for you. Alright, so multiply throughout by the denominator of the left-hand side. This is what you'll be left with. Now, as you have learned in identities in um, remainder factor theorem chapter, okay, how do we solve for an identity like this? Okay, very, very simple, isn't it? Well, first of all, if we want to solve for B, well, we simply have to get rid of the A. How do we get rid of the A? Well, we substitute in let X be equal to negative 1. Okay, now why do I let X be negative 1? Well, because when X is negative 1, negative 1 plus 1 will give you a 0. And so this 0 multiplied by A will eliminate the A. And therefore, you're only left with an equation with B. Okay, so let's do that, shall we? So when X is negative 1, we have negative 11 minus 1. That will give me a negative 12. Okay, and as mentioned, our A will disappear. 
Okay, and of course when x is uh, negative 1, negative 1 multiplied by 2 will give me a negative 2. Negative 2 minus 1 will give me a negative 3. So this will be a negative 3b. And therefore from here, we know that our b will be equal to positive 4. Okay, so we got our b. Now, how to find our a? Again, very simple, based on what we have learned before in identities. Now to find a, we have to get rid of the b. How do we get rid of the, get rid of the b? Well, we make x equals to half. Okay, why x equals to half? Well, because you know that when x is equal to half, okay, 2 multiplied by half will give you a 1, and this 1 minus 1 will give you a 0, and this big fat 0 multiplied by b will give you 0. So the b will be eliminated as well. So when x is equal to half, now we just substitute that again, shall we? So 11 multiplied by half, that will give me 11 over 2, minus 1 is equal to, now this is um, half plus 1, so there's 1 and a half, so 1 and a half is 3 over 2, so it's 3 over 2a. And of course, as expected, the b will disappear, so there's no more b, so nothing behind. So using a calculator, okay, or you know, mental sum, if you're good at it, okay, you will work out that a is equal to 3. Okay, so now what does this tell us? Okay, well, we think we need a little bit more space here, so let's scroll a little bit lower. Okay, now, because we know that, you know, our, our fraction, okay, our original fraction, the single fraction, can be expressed in a sum of partial fractions like this. Okay, and now that we figure out what is A and what is B, we can basically, we can basically say that, well, we have done the reverse. Okay, so we just have to substitute in the a equals to 3, and of course b equals to 4. Okay, now what this tells us is that when you make this sum, okay, into a single fraction, you will get this. Alright, so what we have done is simply the reverse.